And joining us now to dive into the bigger picture of Saturday's clashes is Public Awareness and Advocacy Coordinator at ASAF, an aid organization for refugees and asylum seekers in Israel, Oli Levinson Sela. Oli, how come the police were surprised by the protest? I mean, despite all warnings from the Eritrean community prior to the event. Well, it's a, real, it's a real puzzle to me and to all of us because the Eritrean community and the leaders of the community have been um, approaching and in written referrals and orally to the police um, a week prior to the um, event. And they were warning that this, these clashes are about to come, to become uh, to, to happen. Um, we've seen these clashes during the past month in Toronto, in Stockholm, in other cities in the world. Everyone knew that this was going to be a real clash and, and that the, there is going to be violence. And the, the leaders of the community have urged the police not to allow this event to, um, to take place. And instead of listening to the warnings of the community itself, the police um, not only uh, allowed this um, event to take place, it also did not um, uh, d uh, did not make the the, the proper um, um, preparations for the clashes, and the police was not prepared. I mean, there is no justification for using live ammunition um, to um, on uh, on um, demonstrators. Oli, you know, but people question the relevance of such violent protests here in Tel Aviv. Eritrea is often referred to as the North Korea of Africa due to its uh, totalitarian regime. How does this regime really affect the Eritrean asylum seekers, both in Israel and worldwide, those not living inside the country, inside uh, Eritrea? Um, many Eritreans have fled the country, have, le have fled Eritrea during the years because it is known as North Korea of Africa. It, is, it's, it, it holds one of the most suppressive um, um, uh, um, dictatorship led by Isia Safawaki. And, and, and Eritreans have been fleeing the country. And instead of receiving asylum in the countries, in Israel, they are not acknowledged as refugees as, as they should have. Um, they, they do not receive any right. And on top of that, the um, Eritrean regime continues to, um, to haunt the refugees, the asylum seekers who have fled the country via the embassies, the Eritrean embassies around the world. Now, we see that in all the countries. They are, there are... Um, you know, people working with the regime in the, the, the different countries, they are um, intimidating the asylum seekers living in that country. We've heard of um, threats of violence against asylum seekers who have been living here uh, from the uh, supporters of the regime who are also here. So people, uh, instead of having some peace and quiet after um, this very hard experience that they have been through, running away from home, um, um, going through terrible um, um, experiences on the way. Yes. Instead of having peace and quiet when they when they reach their asylum state, they are still haunted uh, by the regime that they um, uh, left. Oli, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.